Welcome to Rocket Propulsion Fundamentals. Today's lesson is on propellant feed systems. Liquid bipropellant rockets carry both their fuel and oxidizer. The most common type of fuel is liquid hydrogen, and the most common type of oxidizer is liquid oxygen. These propellants are stored in tanks. But how does the propellant make its way from the tanks to the combustion chamber? And how do you control how much propellant flows? Liquid propellant systems can be fairly complex. To begin with, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen have very low boiling points. You usually find hydrogen and oxygen in their gaseous states. So in order to keep them in their liquid form, they have to be kept at very low temperatures. Liquid oxygen must be kept at 90 Kelvin, while liquid hydrogen must be kept below 20 Kelvin. If the temperature rises above these values, they evaporate into gas and lose their density. For this reason, tanks are never filled up to the very top. Some extra space or eulage is left over to allow these gases to evaporate. This eulage can be from 70% to 95% of the total volume of the propellant tanks. To give a frame of reference, room temperature is 293 Kelvin, and water freezes at 273 Kelvin. If you've ever seen footage of a rocket launch, you'll notice that many times huge chunks of ice fall from the rockets as it begins to move. This ice forms because the tanks must be kept at such cold temperatures, and moisture that comes into contact with the rocket tanks condenses into ice. Ice is unfavorable because it adds to the inner mass of the rocket, which increases the weight. If the propellants evaporate, the pressure in the tanks increases and this could lead to tank and valve failure, which can be catastrophic to the rocket. Therefore, special insulated tanks are required, which tend to add weight to the rocket. Now how is this propellant transported out of the tanks? There are a series of pipelines running from the tanks to the combustion chamber. There are also pipes to fill and drain propellant, and pipes to vent out the propellant that evaporates. In order to regulate when the propellant flows and when it doesn't, valves are fitted into the pipelines to block flow. Valves are very important in rockets. To list a few, there are ball valves, gate valves, and burst diaphragms. Each one has its own specialized use. Burst diaphragms, for example, are normally closed, and they are designed to burst once the high pressure is reached in the pipes in order to prevent overpressurization. Another factor to consider is how to control how much propellant flows into the combustion chamber, and at what speed. You can't rely on gravity to push down the propellant because the rocket will not always be in an upward position. In turbulent flight, where the rocket moves uncontrollably, the propellant moves uncontrollably also and becomes very difficult to push out. Therefore, you need a mechanism to push out the propellant, and there are two methods. The simplest way to do this is to use a gas pressure feed system. This gas is stored at high pressure within its own tank, and it pushes the propellant out once ejected. There are valves on pressure regulators to control when the gas flows and how much of the gas flows. These gases are usually inert, meaning that they do not react with the propellants. Helium, for example, is commonly used. A lot of times, other gases that can react with propellants are used. In these cases, the gas can't come into contact with the propellant, so there must be a separating mechanism. A bladder separation mechanism can be used. Gas expands the bladder and pushes out the propellant, which is stored in a spherical tank. Another way to prevent contact is to use a sliding piston. Gas is injected and pushes the piston down a cylindrical tank. The drawback to this method is that the piston adds to the rocket's inert mass. Frictional forces within the sliding mechanism may also counteract the pressurized gas.